Today, I want to talk about the technology that will have the single biggest impact on healthcare ever. Of course, I'm talking about artificial intelligence or AI. In this video, I want to give you the shortest guide on what it is, how it works, how it will disrupt healthcare, and whether you should feel it or not. AI is not science fiction anymore. AI is here and now. I'm Dr. Bertalan Meshko, and you are watching The Medical Futurist. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say artificial intelligence? Of course, this. The war against the machines. AI has already penetrated every aspect of our lives. And if you think about it as something that only belongs to sci-fi movies and the far future, I'm afraid you're wrong. If you use Google, the information it presents to you is fine-tuned to your needs and habits. There is no person sitting behind a computer doing that, but an algorithm that learns from your decisions and gradually gets better at creating your personalized version of the search engine. Facebook and Instagram work the same way. The ads you see are chosen based on what you say in front of your smartphone. The algorithm learns about your habits and choices and gradually fine-tunes what it presents to you. Or did you know that Waze and Google Maps are so smart that they won't give you the fastest route on purpose? A flowing traffic is more important than you alone, so they adjust where they send people to avoid traffic jams on our routes. In a way, they are already an invisibly usher us to create a more efficient system. And the list goes on. If your car can pedal or park like mine can, you are being guided by AI. If you use Spotify, Uber, Amazon, Netflix, or any products from Apple, IBM or Intel, you already use some form of AI. Today, you used AI for hours. Well, there is something really troubling at the heart of this. If we take a deeper look at it, regarding the services and the products that you use, you essentially don't make any decisions. Your habits, preferences and needs are built into the system and an algorithm constantly analyzes those. But you are not in control. Moreover, you are being manipulated. The responsibility of our generation is to find out how to benefit from using AI while still being in control. You can only be in control if you understand how it works. So the plan with this video is to give you enough basic details that you can have a conversation with anyone about AI. So first things first, what is AI? The absolute simplest definition is that Artificial intelligence is intelligence demonstrated by machines. Whether they are robots or algorithms, that's the gist of it. Second, the levels of AI. The world-famous philosopher and AI expert Nick Bostrom described in his book Superintelligence the three major levels of AI. The first level is Artificial Narrow Intelligence, or ANI. It refers to a computer's ability to perform a single, very well-defined task extremely well like playing chess or identifying tumors on CT scans in seconds. And they can be just as, or even more accurate, than humans. The second level is Artificial General Intelligence, or AGI. It refers to a, a machine that can match a human being's cognitive capacity, that has the ability to understand and learn any complex intellectual tasks that a human being can. In medicine, AGI can be the perfect assistant to physicians, or even more. And the third level is Artificial Superintelligence, or ASI, that as its name implies, refers to a machine surpassing the cognitive capacity of all humanity. Yes, that's the Skynet scenario. The ideal vision is to just almost reach AGI, but stop right before, so we can harness the benefits of AI without completely losing control. But as things stand today, we will only talk about Artificial Narrow Intelligence for at least a decade or so. Third, the methods of AI. Machine learning is the method where an algorithm learns from data, identifying patterns and making decisions with minimal or no human intervention. Today, we only look at the four most popular methods. Supervised learning is used when we can precisely define the task we want the algorithm to learn based on data that we already have. Let's take the following example. We have two sets of medical records of patients, group A and group B. 
in one set, we have family history, lab markers and other details with the diagnosis. In the other set, we have the same kinds of data, but without the diagnosis. So, we would like to build a model that can learn to assign the right diagnosis to patients in group B based on the associations and labels the algorithm learns about in group A. It's like learning with a teacher because we know exactly what the algorithm should learn. It is by far the most frequently used training mode. Unsupervised learning is like learning without a teacher. We have a group of patients with different sets of data, but we do not know their individual diagnosis. We build a model, then try to cluster patients based on similar attributes such as the symptoms they presented with, their lab markers or age and gender. We might learn new associations we have not looked at before. In summary, we devise certain rules, let the algorithm learn by itself, and we do not modify the algorithm based on the outcome. Reinforcement learning. The teacher is only able to give feedback after a series of actions, not for each item as he does with supervised learning. The model starts performing the task only knowing some basic rules, and after failing or succeeding in completing the task, the teacher weighs in to push it to use the winning strategy more. This way, the program can build its own experiences as it performs the task more and more. It is similar to how we train dogs. When the dog performs or tries to perform a task, we only give it a treat if it performs well. The most famous example for this method is how Alpha Zero can learn to become the best player in any two-player game in hours by playing millions of games against itself. It starts playing a game knowing only its basic rules, and the developers let the algorithm know when it won a match to prioritize that strategy by playing the next game. And then there is deep learning. It's a vastly different beast, both a subset of machine learning and an entirely different approach to how AI should think. Deep learning uses a layered structure of artificial neural networks that is inspired by the neural network of the human brain. While the other methods are better with data organized into a spreadsheet and could perform narrow tasks very well, deep learning can be used for more complex tasks and it has the capacity to process images, sound, and other high dimensionality data. So when you want to teach an AI to recognize a cat on a photo or a tumor on a CT scan, deep learning is the method to use. And now for the opportunities and challenges. So, why should we be excited about AI disrupting healthcare? Because as you see it now, it can advance or outright revolutionize medicine at every level. There are many tasks within medicine where we, human beings, will not be able to compete with AI. AI will be able to mine medical records, to gobble up all the information, the more than 31 million medical papers out there, the big data coming from studies, and have all that knowledge readily available to its human counterparts. With that vast knowledge, deep learning algorithms will be able to design treatment plans. In oncology, these will analyze huge datasets, genomic profiles, and combine them with attributes from a patient's medical file to identify targeted, personalized treatments. Those treatment plans will include precision medicine. Unlike the classical way, where drugs and treatments are based on the needs of the statistical average person, AI will be able to analyze how your body would react to a treatment plan and advise accordingly before you take any medication. Moving away from the one-size-fits-all medical solutions towards these targeted, personalized therapies is one of the biggest advantages we can gain with AI. Can you imagine using AI for drug design and finding efficient drug combinations nobody has ever thought of before? Can you imagine how cheaper and faster clinical trials would become if AI could analyze data from patients real-time? Can you imagine a world where we don't test drugs on patients? Instead, AI would run millions of simulations on virtual patients? Can you imagine a world where every single medical decision is supported and cross-checked by an algorithm to reduce human error? These are just some of the visions of what impact AI can have on the future of healthcare. But while the upside is that huge, realistically, there is much work to be done before we could reach these visions. First of all, there is no AI revolution without a lot of data. And that data can only come from you, your medical records, from your health sensors and apps. 
an AI algorithm is only as good as the data you feed it with. And even if the medical institutions and software companies can make data anonymized, it was proven in many cases that individual profiles can be traced back. Trust is just as big of a problem. We will need a lot of time to trust a driverless car, to experience how it reacts in situations we are familiar with, and consequently, it will take even more time for medical professionals to trust AI with a medical diagnosis. This should be taken into consideration when we decide to adopt the technology into the healthcare setting. And once again, AI is only as good as the data we feed it with. But what happens if the data is biased? In a terrifying example, AI was implemented in the United States criminal justice system to predict how many criminals will reoffend. They found that the algorithm predicted disproportionately high probability of black people committing future crimes, no matter how minor their initial offense was. AI programmers must know about these issues and actively fight against them. But the ultimate fear is losing jobs, replacing humans in healthcare, and consequently losing the art of medicine. AI won't take the jobs of physicians and won't monopolize medicine. It's not the use of technologies that has been taking the art away from physicians already. It's the system. It's the administrative tasks and the monotonous day-to-day -day assignments that takes physicians away from patients and away from being a healer. Fortunately, those are the tasks that will be taken over by AI and autonomous systems, freeing up medical professionals to finally fulfill the mission they signed up for to help patients with compassion, creativity, and care. There will never be a situation where either a robot or an algorithm will take the place of a doctor. That's why I'm saying AI will bring the real era of the art of medicine. When an AI will find a treatment or a cure we haven't found before, the real art of medicine will be to reverse engineer and understand how it came to that conclusion. This is going to be the biggest challenge physicians have ever faced. So. How should we think about all this? I think AI will only support, elevate and advance those who know how to use and harness this new tool that we are creating. But the time when you can still decide if you want to be in control in that future is today. If you like this video and want to hear more about the role AI will play in the future of medicine and healthcare, please subscribe below.